This is a topic video for composition of a trigonometric function with its inverse trigonometric function, problem type 1. Working through problems on this topic requires you to understand the difference between a trigonometric function and its inverse function, so let's go over this. Cosine of x and cosine raised to the negative 1 of x, also known as cosine inverse of x, are inverses of each other. You may see cosine inverse of x written as arc cosine of x in some presentations, but they mean the same thing. Suppose that we want to know the value of cosine pi over 4. It is best to have such values memorized, but in case you don't, you can make a drawing of the unit circle. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees, and 45 degrees is in quadrant 1. We are given an angle, pi over 4, and we need to find cosine pi over 4. We sketch the unit circle, or at least quadrant 1, placing the vertex of our 45 degree angle at the origin and the initial side along the positive x axis. We estimate the size of our 45 degree angle knowing that the terminal side of the angle will bisect quadrant 1. We draw the terminal side making sure it extends to or through the unit circle. We drop perpendicular towards the x axis from the point where the terminal side intersects the unit circle. We label the hypotenuse 1, since the radius of the unit circle is 1. We know the central angle is 45 degrees, so we know the third angle is also 45 degrees. We recall that in a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle with hypotenuse 1, both legs have length square root 2 over 2. So we can label the point where the terminal side intersects the unit circle as square root 2 over 2 square root 2 over 2. If we do not remember these facts, we redevelop them by using the appropriate methods. Suppose that we want to know cosine inverse of square root 2 over 2. This means that we must find the angle that has square root 2 over 2 as its cosine. We are given the x value of a point on the unit circle and asked to find the corresponding angle. Looking at the unit circle, it seems that the solution to this would be pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Since there must only be one answer to this type of question, inverse trigonometric functions are restricted to which parts of the unit circle the answer can be in. Looking at this table, we see that the inverse of cosine is restricted from 0 to pi, which includes quadrants 1 and 2. This means that the only valid answer to cosine inverse of root 2 over 2 would be pi over 4, since 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4. It is also important to know that inverse trigonometric functions may be written as cosine inverse or arc cosine. Both forms represent an inverse function. Now, let's do an example. Note that this problem can also be written as this, since arc cosine and cosine inverse are both notations that we use to denote the inverse of cosine. To start these problems, we first solve what is inside the parentheses. In this case, arc cosine of negative root 2 over 2. Recall that for the inverse cosine functions, you are given the x value of the coordinate point and need to find the angle while keeping in mind the restrictions of the inverse function. Referring back to our table, the restrictions for the cosine inverse function is from 0 to pi. What is the angle that makes arc cosine of negative root 2 over 2 true? Since we are restricted to the top half of the unit circle, it would be 3 pi over 4. Great work! So we just determined that arc cosine of negative root 2 over 2 is equal to 3 pi over 4. Now we can substitute this into the original expression and write cosine of 3 pi over 4. What is the cosine of 3 pi over 4? Because we are looking for the x value at the angle 3 pi over 4, it would be negative root 2 over 2. Since cosine and arc cosine are inverses of each other, do they cancel each other out? That's a good question. This problem may lead you to think this is true, however this is not always the case. Let's look at another example that disproves this theory. We will start with the function within the parentheses. Tangent of 11 pi over 6. We may reference the unit circle and look at the angle 11 pi over 6. Most unit circles don't include the tangent values, but that's okay because we can calculate it. Recall that tangent equals sine over cosine. 
sine 11 pi over 6 is equal to negative 1 half. Cosine of 11 pi over 6 is equal to square root of 3 over 2. So negative 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2 is equal to negative 1 half times 2 over square root 3. This simplifies to negative 1 over square root 3. To rationalize the denominator, we multiply by square root 3 over square root 3 and write negative square root 3 over 3. Therefore, tangent of 11 pi over 6 is equal to negative square root 3 over 3. Now, what is arctangent of negative square root 3 over 3? Would it be 11 pi over 6? That would be the answer if there were no restrictions. However, arctangent is restricted to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Therefore, the answer would be negative pi over 6.